created it by hand from mighty mountains to the raging sea to every leaf on every single tree it's in the holy book just open up and take a look In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light. And the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds. More birds. 
And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. animals, and small animals. There were spotted animals. and horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. Mm. Sit. Uh, uh, sit, please. <coughs> <laughs> God looked over everything and was happy. And on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> Now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. 
It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. <laughs> well, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. This new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots Eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must be long to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not too hokey. Know your wordle, be turtle, yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea, Will mostly fishes be with whale and snail and lobster one and all? The orange one is goldfish, cod the ice cold fish, tadpole has the bold wish of one day being full. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not Hopper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit, for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend, too. <sighs> there were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person, so God created woman. <coughs> what? Hello. Uh, hello. 
I mean, uh, hi. I, I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden. The Garden of Eden. It's really nice here. You'll see. These are my friends. This is Monkey, and this is Dog. And this is, um... I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like... Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it. And I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. <laughs> and so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh. You startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um, I, I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit. Isn't it? You can eat it, you know. E eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. <laughs> We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well, then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. 
God probably won't even notice. <laughs> and this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. <laughs> Try it. Well, if it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, Maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> Yikes! I'm naked too! <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh-oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh-oh. Adam, Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no! You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here. But it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. 
But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel, go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. <laughs> oh! chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him, could it? Thank you, I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes, and one day I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, and God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home for battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, Father. We're old enough. And strong enough. We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Everybody, wait! Don't leave without me. Please, please let me go, Father. I want to fight for the people of Israel, too. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, 
I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And, and then, and then, I'm not afraid of those Philistines. Oh. So please, Father, please let me go fight too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep, and Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Abinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so swear yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh huh? Not me. Not me? Uh, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> Just one man. If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Oh. Now, who is brave enough to fight? A giant! Just step forward! I'll be waiting! Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. Who 
me. Not yesterday. <laughs> Not today either. None of us are brave enough to fight a ten foot giant. Or foolish enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? Ah! Whoa. Ooh. <laughs> no, don't even think about it. I'll try to. Ah! Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll. Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? <sighs> oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to father in Bethlehem. The king will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Now remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you'll let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son, I told you before, they won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier, and you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But Father, I'm strong, and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? What do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear! But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant! You'll even let him marry his own daughter! And none of you are brave enough to try? No! Because none of us want to die for no reason!
Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy. <laughs> Says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> <laughs> Says God will help him fight the giant. <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> Well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But, sire. Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. I understand a giant of a man and I am not his spear appears to be the size of a small tree and all I've got is a slingshot this Philistine is large but I This Philistine is large, but I little hero? Looks like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Y 
Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boy speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, Your Majesty. I am young and small. But God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David. And may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield. Get my armor. Put them on young David. Huh? Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says. <laughs> <laughs> I can hardly pick up your sword, Your Majesty. And your shield is much too heavy for me. But, uh, David... God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. You can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother! It is you! Our brave baby brother David! Bring the boy here to King Saul! Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, he always remembered the comforting words of God. <laughs>